Dear Diana, it's been a long time since our last chat. How are you in your new flat in Guayaquil? I always have the moments that when new things are happening in my life here in China, I immediately want to share with you the fleeting impulse and ambiguous emotions you always understand so well. And actually it's through this way that I often remember and reflect about my life, like right now, and I finally write to you. I must have told you a lot about Wanzhou, the city I consider mine now, about its greenness, its humidity, its richness in colors and outdoors, and so old and so young at the same time. I sent you a picture of my window on the 13th floor. You must be shocked at the first sight, so many tall buildings. But do you see the many plants stretch out of the balconies? I can see and feel so much out of this modern mundaneness. I guess that's also the reason that we both returned home to our Hong Kong countries after two years studying and so more time lingering in Europe. Will you agree? I want to tell you about Xiao Bay, a special part of Wanzhou I newly discovered, where you see so much more colors and hear so different accents. It's like the Angola bar in Lisbon we hanged out, or the Matonga district in Brussels we sometimes passed by where you feel it's a small enclave. Everything is a bit exotic, but daily, and, and mixed, not just for showing, but for the necessity of life's vitality and the pleasure itself. I said it's new, but it's already been populated for many years. The Africans came to the city in the early 2000s. In the same time, when my family moved from Inner Mongolia to Canton, from the very north to the very south part of China. I remembered how friends and relatives warned me that Canton was a dangerous place, with many migrant workers, vendors, crimes, prostitution, but I never quite got that. Isn't me, myself, a migrant? You should not go alone, nor at night. I still hear this sentence every time I speak speak with my grandparents over the phone. While well, I have been to different dangerous places, I was in Missouri, the town next to St. Louis where the 18th year old black man and young man, Michael Brown, was shot dead by police in 2014. I was afraid indeed when walking in the campus in, in Missouri and two white drunken men students yelled at me, Tofu! and laughed out loud. <laughs> Looking back at the photos of my U.S. study, I was surprised to find out how much weight I gained for the half year. The same thing happened again in my first year in Europe. Maybe I was hoping to digest my fear. I should admit now that the first time when all the classmates went drinking in a bar and I was absent, was not because of my stomach ache. I returned home halfway because it was so dark and I was afraid. Shabai was not new. It's actually shrinking. With the strict policy and rising price, many Africans left already. I regret not coming here 10 years ago, age 18. I was attending an English training class in Guangzhou just nearby Xiao Bay. An elder classmate warned me not to go there. She said there were many blacks and it could be dangerous. I followed her advice. Finally, I was in Xiao Bay after so many years, after I've traveled to two different continents and could face and handle my fears. It started at someone else's film, project but I was so evolved and also ended up making one myself.
But I have doubts. What's my connection here? And keep asking myself a question that puzzles us and sometimes to such deep depression we both know so well when we try to make a films about others. I dug into archives, all events, films, the gestures are always the same. We are friends, but I find it rather remote and pretentious. Then I thought about fear. About you. Are you more black or brown? I've never thought about this question because you are simply just Diana. And I thought about our first conversation and it turned out to be such a joke. Do you still remember? The first day we met in school of Lisbon, you told me you were living with a black guy and that the guy <laughs> often sat on your lap. <laughs> and I was <laughs> so shocked but pretended to be to be cool and ask you, isn't the guy heavy? <laughs> and it's only till the end that we figured out that you were saying a black cat. <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy you found your black guy now. I also know some myself, Anthony, Roberto, Maldi, and a guy nicknamed 1000. <laughs> I was afraid that our friendship may fade once the film was over, but Anthony called me a couple days ago in an emergency mode to help him charge his phone credit, and he's somewhere new in this country. Somehow, I feel quite proud of that. But don't worry, I, I know where to find him for the debt. I know Xiao Bei now. I also thought about the project you told me you want to do in Ecuador, about the Africans who came as slaves to the country in early 16th century, but rebelled and freed themselves. Have you started it? Maybe you should start it in Xiao Bei, in Guangzhou, since there are so many connections now. Yours, Simon. Yeah,